What's up guys, it's Marius from All New Judgment and today I'm going to show you how to design a transmission line using horn rasp. If you remember a while back, I made a transmission line just using basic theory and no modeling software. And you know how that turned out. So I decided to give horn rasp a try. It wasn't easy as the interface is very confusing, but I managed to figure it out. So. Not only am I going to show you how to use this app, but we are also going to measure a transmission line subwoofer and compare modeled response with actual response. Before we begin, I invite you to watch the previous transmission line video as I teach you the basics of T-Line and also we are using that subwoofer as a device under test in this video. If you are lazy enough, I'm going to quickly reiterate the steps of finding the line length. So, you open up the spec sheet of your subwoofer, look for the resonant frequency, it's a parameter called FS. Now we need to find the wavelength of that frequency, you simply divide the speed of sound, which is 343 meters per second, by that frequency. The resulting number we divide by 4 to find the quarter wavelength. And that is the length uh, the line needs to be. Well, at least that should be your starting point. You can try to play with it and try to make it shorter or longer. If you are asking how large the line needs to be, look for the effective area of the speaker. It's a parameter called SD. The area of the line needs to be equal or larger than that number. Of course, the line can uh, take various shapes, but for the purpose of this video, we are going to focus on a straight line, so not a tapered line. So we got the introductory part out of the way, now we can go ahead and start the application. I'm not going to show you how to download it, just go to hornresp.net and you can get it from there. Now before we start to do anything, make sure you have uh, the spec sheet of the driver ready. In this case we have the Ultimax 8 inch from Dayton Audio, so now let's open up a uh, hornresp. So we are greeted with this lovely interface that we, at least myself, I didn't understand anything at the beginning. So first thing you gotta do is to start the project by clicking the add button. And now we can input parameters into the application. So here at the top you can select uh, the loading, which is half space, corner loading. This doesn't have an effect on, on the overall response. It just uh, increases depending on which uh, loading space you select. Uh, plus 6 dB, plus 12 dB and so on. I don't know why this is here. I just use uh, half space. And all of these parameters at the bottom, you uh, just enter zero for each one. And the next step we have to do, we have to enter the parameters of the speakers which are entered in this section over here. What I'd like to do is double click on the first one and here we have to copy all of these parameters from the spec sheet. So we have SD which is 211.2, watch out for the units of measurement so they check out. RE is 4.2, FS is 31.6, VAS is 21.3 liters, QES is 0.75, and QMS is 2.59. If you look at QTS, it checks out. LE is 1.14, QMAX 300 watts, and XMAX 16 liters. So now let's uh, switch to the actual uh, designing of the transmission line. So here you see S1, S2, S2, S3. These are sections of the horn. Basically, this app is named Horn Resp because uh, you are designing horns, horn resp, horn response. But transmission line is basically a, still a horn. A horn is a waveguide, a transmission line is also a waveguide. So a horn has a throat area and a mouth area and a distance between those two areas 
which follow a search a certain function so it can be conical exponential hyperbolic uh, parabolic whatever and you can select the area of the throat in s1 and the area uh, of the mouth at s2 here you select the length between these two areas and here you select the, the function uh, of uh, the line between the two areas if your horn has multiple sections you will use this one as well so if if it starts conical and then goes exponential you can use different sections for that horn in our case when we design the transmission line we have the same area at the mouth and the same area at the throat so it is basically a straight line or a tube. Even though our transmission line has folds in it, this app sees it as a straight line and even though it has folds, the total length of the line is important. So in our case, uh, uh, the line has uh, 192 millimeters by 192 millimeters and if we bring up the calculator uh, make sure you enter the area in square centimeters so 19.2 multiplied by 19.2 this is the area of our transmission line from the first video uh, when we made that box so 368.64 368.64 and S2 is the same 368.64 and the length uh, we calculated to be 2.71 meters so that is 271 centimeters now we don't have a, a second section for this transmission line you could enter one for example if you want to place different absorbent material along the line you can uh, split this transmission line into two sections even though it's still a straight line so you can put different materials in different sections because this app allows uh, that thing but for now we are going to eliminate uh, the second section so we are going to put zero here and zero here and zero here so now we have only one section in this transmission line. Now remember, you can choose uh, the growth rate, so to say, to exponential, conical, parabolic. But since we have the same area at the beginning, at the end, it's just a straight line. It doesn't matter what you select here. Most logical will be would be to select conical. So now if we, if we click uh, Calculate, uh, this is uh, an image of how the transmission line uh, would look like and if we go to acoustical power well do you remember this response let me bring up Rumi Q wizard so if we compare uh, the model response with the measured response from Rumi Q wizard we can see that the responses match almost perfectly we have uh, that uh, big peak uh, at uh, before roll off we have that even bigger peak ar around 100 hertz a uh, huge cancellation between 100 hertz and 200 hertz and uh, basically the model response coincides with the actual measured response so now we are going to fix this to fix this issue we are going to offset the driver so we're not going to place it uh, at the beginning of the line we're going to place it somewhere along the line between the beginning and the end and that way we will see that the response will look much better also we are going to place uh, dampening material and we'll see what that will do so first thing we have to do is to add another section to our transmission line so the length stays the same but we have two sections so we can place the driver between those sections so we have the same area because the line is the same from beginning to end so um, 
If you're having issues inputting these parameters, you can double click and it will ask you uh, what type of uh, uh, flare it has. It has a conical flare and we entered S2, which is uh, exactly the same as S2 from the beginning, so it's already entered. And S3 is the same. And let's say the length is uh, 136. And click Calculate. And save. Now, the first area, the first the segment uh, added with the second set segment needs to have the total length. So, so in this case, we have to enter here 135 so 135 plus 136 is equal to 271 so that is the total length of the line and uh, in this case we have to double click over here you can see additional information in the uh, bottom left corner it says single driver and if we double click here it's OD which is offset driver which we want and now you can simply click Calculate. And uh, to view additional information, let's click on the loudspeaker wizard. And here click Yes. So here we have a visual representation of the transmission line. So here is the uh, entire line. And the, the driver is uh, somewhere in the middle because the first segment is 135 and the other segment is 136, which is basically the same. And we can modify the length of the first section here and the length of the second section here. So if you see me reducing the length of the first section, you can see the driver moving towards the left and the length of the second section is increasing to keep the horn length the same. However, if you want to increase the length of the second uh, uh, section, you will increase the total length as well. So we want to keep this uh, to 271 centimeters. And uh, let's take the slider all the way to the left. This means that the speaker is at the beginning of the line just in our just uh, it's the same as our previous example so if we click here power and uh, uncheck the baseline we have this response which is very fam familiar because it's the same as before now as we offset the driver so we increase the length of the second section we can see the response start to modify and what we are after is this thing somewhere around here we can see we have a linear section over here we still have that big cancellation but we offset the cancellation somewhere into the 200 hertz range which is not important to us because this is a subwoofer and the subwoofer will not play 200 hertz at least not in our case so we solved the issue with the cancellation and now we have the problem with this peak over here and this peak over here and that we will solve with dampening material so to to use dampening material you simply check uh, filling and here you have the first segment and to give you a visual representation you have uh, to click schematic over here and this is the first segment FR means the density of the material and we are going to use rock wool because that it has very high density Don't use that egg crate stuff sponge stuff. It will not work for subwoofers So that has a very high density. I can't remember the units of measurement uh, Used by horn risp is something like MKS Something like that Anyway, rock wool has a very high density and if I hit this over to the max is a thousand a thousand is very high the rock wool has several thousand is it's even higher than one thousand so uh, do the same for this one and um, the important thing to know here is when the slider is at the middle the whole section is filled with dampening material as you slide it to the to the left 
you see this is the first section it fills it by 60 percent starting with the left from left to right if i turn the slider into the other side so here i fill it 41 percent starting from right to left so in our case we are going to fill it at the beginning of the line so starting from left to right so i'm going to uh, take the slider over here and somewhere around 40 percent so we are going to fill the beginning of the line with rock wool that is the mineral wool which is basically used to insulate rooftops and uh, at the exit of the line so in this section over here i'm going to use just a little bit on um, on uh, on the exit so i'm going to line the walls i'm not going to fill it fully so i'm just going to um so here is the exit of the line just like no i don't know two three percent something like that because this when you enter like ten percent uh the app um, you are telling the app that you are filling that whole area with dampening material the first 10 percent of that uh, section but in our case we are just going to line the walls so if we go to power you can see the response is much flatter so we fixed the peak over here and the peak over here if you want to add more dampening material you can see what this does it straightens everything out but the problem is as you put more and more dampening material into a transmission line you are basically transforming the transmission line into a closed box basically because the air uh, doesn't escape um, the the sound doesn't escape through the port because it's obstructed fully with dampening material so while this response looks better more linear it's actually closer to um, the response to a closed box and we want to build a transmission line so in that case let's uh, leave it how it was this one to 40 percent so let me take this to zero so as you can see the fact that we uh, just three percent of the exit of the line has uh, a massive effect on those peaks so Dampening material is very critical when designing a transmission line. So basically I'm going to show you what we'll do because we are going to use that box from before and we are going to modify it. We are going to offset the driver, place the dampening material just that we just talked about and uh, measure it and see what kind of results we get. So I switched to this vlog style point of view. I'm filming with my GoPro, so I hope the audio isn't bad because I don't have any external mic attached to it. So before I show you what I'm what I'm trying to do to the box, uh, I'm going to quickly address some of the comments which said, uh, look at this guy, he's so passionate. He's uh, transformed his living room into a workshop. Hashtag no excuses or Oh my God, Romania is so cool. You get to use your table saw inside your apartment and no police banging at your door. <laughs> well, to clear things out, um, my workshop is uh, at, it's a room which is basically an unused office space and I turn it into a workshop. So the fact that you see two old armchairs at the back of the room does not make it a living room. However, today we are going to do some woodworking in, as is not a living room, let, let's say living space. This is the attic of my parents' house. And I do some measurements over here because we have a large room. And here is a large open area with no boundaries and it's perfect for um, making acoustical measurements so uh, let's look uh, at the box and I'll show you what I'm trying to do so basically we need to offset the driver so here is the beginning of the line where the uh, driver was and we need to move it somewhere around here which is a third of the way along the line 
and basically we need to make a cutout over here so we can fit the driver and when we do the cutout uh, we it will result in an MDF disc which I'm going to stick to this panel and then I'm going to place it like this to plug this hole over here but before I plug it I seal it off I'm going to fill it with the uh, dampening material. I'm going to use uh, that uh, super dense stuff that you use to insulate the rooftops. I don't know how do you call it, rock wool, mineral wool, something like that. Very dense and all that area over here will be filled. And at the exit, so the end of the line, I'm just going to line the walls and uh, not fully obstruct the line with the dampening material so uh, that is basically it what i'm trying to do and i'm going to put the camera on a tripod and film everything i do so you go to watch and fast forward the whole process so here we go So this is the Anika Wake response of our transmission line and you can see that it looks very very good. Now if I switch to 10 Hz to 200 Hz you can see how linear this response is. It actually looks quite amazing. I didn't expect it to go that well. And if we switch back to the whole response and try to compare it with the model response from Horn Resp we can see that it looks pretty similar. We have that dip over there at 200 Hertz, same over here, and a slight peak over here. It, it, is, it is quite remarkable that you can model these uh, transmission lines. I was very intimidated at first. I always knew that transmission lines are very unpredictable, and indeed they are if you don't have the uh, know how how to use the modeling software 
but in this case you, now you can go ahead and model your own transmission line using horn horn rasp and actually have good results this subwoofer sounds quite nice besides the fact that the box is huge and um, bear in mind that the area i chosen is a bit bigger than the sd of the driver so uh, the area could have been smaller and i actually tested this in horn rest and uh, the fact that you reduce the area and uh, it's closer to that of the effective area of the speaker it's actually quite beneficial the response uh, would look a bit better so uh, the box can be smaller and also the response uh, the actual response will be similar will not be like whoa look at this because this one the response looks great so uh, that's about it for this video i hope you learned something new and uh, now you know how to design the transmission line using horn resp don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this and i'll see you next time peace